Good morning and welcome to service at St. George's. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter, traditionally known as Good Shepherd Sunday. If you are following along, please turn to page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and, and blessed, blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his people on earth. earth. Lord, Lord God, God, Heavenly King, King Almighty God, God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. The Collect is found on page 225, the fourth Sunday of Easter, page 2. Two, five. Together. O God, whose, whose Son Jesus, Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Those who have been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. A reading from Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. 
All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. Well, dear friends, here is one of the most well-known and beloved passages of the Bible. With all its assurances and comforts, encouragements and spirited enlightenments, is there any wonder why this psalm captures the hearts and imaginations of so many? From toddler to adult, Psalm 23 is often uttered with sheer confidence in the shepherdship of a God who with loving gaze gives rest to the weary, blesses the dying, soothes the suffering, takes pity on the afflicted, and shields the joyous. I imagine that for many, when the truths found in this psalm penetrate our hearts and minds, we find ourselves simultaneously stirred with courage strengthened in faith, yes, clad with a calm of peace and a peace that lowers, lowers our blood pressure, keeps our hearts and minds grounded in God and armors us for battle against all the forces that oppose life and love in this world. Someone once said, there is a reason we include Psalm 23 at almost every funeral. Why? It is comfort, and that it is, dear friends. Comfort to the grieved and bereaved, light to the dark and snark, peace to the fearful and tearful, advice to the greedy and needy, warning to enemies and frenemies, hope to the poor and insecure. Psalm 23 has it all, and it tells us and declares, God is a good God, and God is so much more. He is our shepherd. That's the proclaimed truth of this passage, and we dare not take it lightly. See, these words are not mere platitude. They are born from a person and a place of deep conviction. They are born from the experience of one who knew the trials and tribulations, the temptations and misgivings, as well as the joys and pleasures of this world. His name is David. And yes, his was a messy, complicated life filled with troubles and heartaches, yet exhilarating highs like when he killed Goliath with a rock from his slingshot. And of course, some devastating and despairing lows as when he had the husband of his paramour killed or when his first child with Bathsheba died in infancy. David, you see, was a man ridden by guilt and shame and begged of God, cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Yet still could he say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What a testimony, what a testimony. I wonder, as we continue to battle COVID-19, what's been your testimony? Do you still believe that God is your shepherd? Do you still believe that he will provide? Do you feel that he is El Shaddai, the God of more than enough? Is there any verse in the Bible that is more fitting than Psalm 23 for such a time as this, if you have doubts? See, these familiar words should not just roll off our tongues. They are words to chew on in times of uncertainty, concern, and worry, and scarcity. They should be treasured, they should be held close, and they should be examined in light of our own experiences. What's been your experience during this pandemic? How are you faring? 
And what have you been up to lately? Regardless of our experience, I believe that God has been our shepherd and still is our shepherd, especially in times like these. So when you hear words like, the Lord is my shepherd, what then do these words mean for you in a time like this? Whatever meaning you derive from Psalm 23, I hope that you hear as I do an assurance and encouragement, a warning and admonition, and an invitation. So won't you journey with me this morning? First, an assurance. I don't know if you've noticed, but there are seven assurances in this psalm. It seems to me at least. Seven is a number that represents perfection in scripture. Yes, we have God's perfect assurance of being cared for, one. Of being at peace as he leads us beside still waters, two. Of being restored when our souls and our spirits are parched. Of finding comfort with his rod and his staff. Of being strengthened in the face of battle. Of being anointed by God. And of course, the final assurance having a dwelling place with God's presence in our lives. But in the interest of time, let's simply look at the assurance of being cared for. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, says the psalmist. In this psalm, we have the assurance that we lack nothing. Do you realize that? That we are completely cared for by our shepherd. And I understand that for some people, that's hard to believe at times. It's hard to hold on to that truth. But knowing that God will not fail, fail to provide everything we need, is a source of comfort and peace. And here's the thing. God may even do us the clarifying favor of providing just what we need, not everything we want. See, want in this psalm does not mean every desire, every, uh, every desire is fulfilled. We shall not be in want means we will never lack the necessities of what we need to live. And if we look at it that way, you and I realize that even with this assurance, we have a responsibility. We have a duty not to hoard, but to take just what we need and implicitly that requires us to share, to provide for others. It's a principle found in the wilderness. Remember the Israelites, when they received provision of manna each day, they were to only take what they needed that day. And then Jesus reminds us of this in the Lord's Prayer, our daily bread. We take what we need, not what we want. We simply take daily bread. And so I ask, how are we sharing our resources with others? If there is one thing that COVID-19 has revealed, and I'm sure there are many others, are some inequities that we as a church, we as a country must face and deal with. As we move forward, dear friends, let us ask ourselves, how are we helping to provide for each other in these times? Let us keep in mind that God's care, his goodness and his mercy doesn't just follow us. It pursues us. It is relentless and ever present all the days of our life, says the psalmist. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever, not just sometimes. He's a God who is God all the time. And that is a challenge too. See, God has a stake in our preservation and our well-being something we should emulate in our interaction with others. So I challenge you, even amidst this pandemic, to share with others, to be a good neighbor. It means that as a church, we take it upon ourselves to make sure we are providing that sacred enough for one another and that we meet the fear of scarcity and the reality of poverty with this simple verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Be assured that we are cared for, and let's care for each other as well. So first, an assurance. And second, there is a warning in this psalm. 
There are a plethora of implicit warnings and facts. But the one that strikes me is that we shall experience hardship. I know that sometimes our theology might lead us to think God brings hardship onto us. That's really bad theology. God allows hardship. It's not God sent, but it certainly can be God used. Right? The psalmist knows that suffering and fear are a part of everyday life. All of us, there is not one of us that do not walk through the valley of the shadow of death, or as some translations say, the valley of deep darkness. This darkness can be brought on by uncertainty or despair, by cancer or addiction, and in recent times by COVID-19. And we may not be the ones afflicted, but we are in relationship with someone who is. And together, we find ourselves in deep darkness. We are living perhaps in one of those moments. And so it's very imperative that we understand that we do face hardship. So that we're not put off by the challenges of our current dilemma. God understood that and he has prepared us for such a time like this. He prepares a table, says the psalmist, in the presence of our enemies. So hardship is par for the course of living in this world. And so as we face those challenges, we are admonished to walk with courage. Bishop Sutton said in a meeting with the clergy this week, the good news is this, there is something available to us that is more powerful than fear. The world calls it courage. I call it Christ. We are all afraid sometimes, that is true, but we don't need to live there. See, courage is that amazing ability to act with conviction in the face of fear. And even when one cannot see the horizon ahead of them, remember, God has given us a spirit, not of timidity, but of courage. My grandmother used to put it this way, the adage, with Christ in the vessel, you can smile at the storm. See, because God understands and he knows and we can act with courage because he prepares us for moments like this. Let's cling to that truth and let's keep in mind that it is in these moments that our Lord comes to us just as he did to his disciples and say, peace be with you, be calm, do not be afraid, do not fear, I am with you always. So my advice in a time like this, be careful, not fearful. Yes, we are warned and we admonish to face our hardship with courage and with faith in God. And so finally, dear friends, having been given that assurance and that warning, there is an invitation. Psalm 23 is a declaration of who God is, yes, but it is also an invitation to have an abiding trust in God and to dwell with God today and tomorrow and forever. In a time like this, in whom do you put your trust? How are you living? In fear and worry or with trust in God? That's the choice. Choose this day whom you serve. David's choice was not to live in fear, but to live faithfully. What's your choice? The thing is, we all have a shepherd. Emerita said, even those of us who think we are striking out on our own, even those among us who do chart new courses and achieve new things are following somebody are guided by some set of ideals or principles, whether or not we are being thoughtful and intentional about it. There are powers at work around us that want us to follow, that want to guide us or cajole us or pressure us into a path of their choosing. The question is, which shepherd do we follow? Is it the God who gives us green pasture, who leads us beside the still waters? Or is it a power in league with evil and death who cares nothing for us, who wants to lead us like sheep to the slaughter? My hope is that you will walk in trust of the God of green pastures. His sheep know his voice. And his voice says, walk with courage. I am the light of the world. Be of good cheer, I have overcome. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am convinced 
that neither death, life nor death, height, none of these things in all creation can separate us from the love of God. That's what his voice says. Can we trust that voice? I believe we can. And so, dear friends, it's words of yearning, hope, and promise. Give Psalm 23 a timeless quality that speaks to all of us. For in it, we find the good shepherd who is relentless, who provides and protects, and whose goodness and mercy pursues us without end all the days of our life. Yes, when we live under the illusion that what should guide us are our own wants and desires, we will never be satisfied. When we try to organize the world and everyone in it around getting what we want, we will never have peace. But if you are looking for peace in the midst of your fear, in the midst of your courage, in the midst or in the midst of this pandemic, then I say we can find that in Christ our good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, says David. May he be yours and mine as we continue to journey through COVID-19. Amen. Amen. Let us stand now and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, page 358. 358. Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Maker, Maker of heaven and earth, of, of all that is seen and unseen. We, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, Lord, the giver of life, who, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The, the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people today are Form 4, found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those impacted by the coronavirus. O God of compassion, giver of life and health, we pray your healing mercies upon all who are in any way affected by the outbreak of COVID-19. Comfort and sustain those who have been stricken, 
Relieve their pain and restore to them your gifts of gladness and strength. Grant to all in authority the courage to make wise decisions that are essential for the common good and strengthen them to lead institutions that care for those whom they serve. Protect those who are compelled to work farms and fields, city streets and factories that put them in danger with little pay. Watch over all first responders and those in the medical professions whose duty it is to care for the sick. Guard them from all danger. Keep them safe in the knowledge that is through their sacrifice and service. The health of the whole community is promoted. Mercifully accept these prayers, O God, of all comfort and our only help in time of need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Shepherd. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Together, most, most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Having made peace with God, my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us share in peace with each other. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Eucharistic prayer begins on page 361, the Great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. Chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, O Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this be asked through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ at Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. We take them in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Prayer, page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, 
and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Continue to walk in peace and love. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. alleluia.